With over 1,500 species of fish in Queensland waters, I often see examples I'm not familiar with. Identifying these animals is sometimes more challenging than getting close enough to shoot good pictures. To find out more about the science of fish identification, I spoke to Ern Grant, one of the world's leading authorities and author of Grant's Guide to Fishes, considered by many to be the definitive reference for Queensland species. That big boy on the wall, uh, obviously you call him a red emperor. And why do you call him a red emperor? Because all your fishing mates have said, ah, you've got another red. And so by common usage, that is a red emperor. Now sure enough, the little one with the, um, the scarlet broad arrow on his side, that's the government brim. And um, that's the juvenile of the red emperor. But the great thing is that both of them are known by the scientific name Lujanus Sebi. Lujanus is the genus name spelled with a capital and Sebi, S-E-B-A-E, is the species name and that really nails it down. The big red emperor being in a family with a couple of its friends such as the Moses perch, Lujanus russeli and uh, things like, oh, the mangrove jack, Lujanus argenti maculatus. Now what this means is they're part of one gigantic family and um, Obviously, there are many, many other families, the families of the toadfishes, of the trevallies, of the whitings, of the brim, for example. One area that can be a little confusing for the average fisherman or diver is the technical information found in many books. While I rely mainly on colour photographs when searching for a fish, it's numbers that researchers use to identify their fish. For example, there's no point saying that the eye is very small or very large or medium sized. What you need is a number, a proportion. So what I've got here is the diameter of the eye and the length of the head. And you might be able to say for the first time, the eye diameter is one-fifth the length of the head. But then you might say, oh, yeah, but that head's very small. So then you say, ah, but the length of the head from there to there is one-fifth, let's guess, one-fifth the length of the body down to the butt of the tail. So now you have some numbers. And then you say, oh yeah, but this is a trevally, it's a very deep-bodied fish. No, can't use it. But if you then measure the depth of a fish and express that as a fraction of the total length, ah, the numbers are starting to click. But you need other numbers. For example, along the side of the fish, there's a number of scales. And um, in the technical literature, that's written L stop, lat stop, lateral line, um, 42 to 46. So it varies between 42 scales along there to a maximum of 46. And the dorsal fin, of course, comes in for its own description. That's the fin on the back. And so the technical description there may say, D for dorsal, now that's always written in Roman, VI, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six spines, six hard spines, but ah, oh, the number of soft rays along here varies between 10 and 12. So now you're starting to get numbers. You're getting some elementary numbers that start to pin the fish down. Again, we come back to numbers. These are saws taken from um, a saw shark or saw fish. Um, these are the boys that inhabit shallow, muddy waters and wander along eating up all the sand crabs. Now, what matters here is that the number of teeth along the side here is the same as the number of teeth on this little joker. So that's the juvenile of this because the numbers correspond or alternatively that's the adult of this little chap. Mind you, there are some things you can um, identify and shape alone and some of these are the sharks. For example, whaler sharks have teeth that are offset triangles like those and you'll never, never mistake tiger shark teeth because they're shaped like uh, coxcombs. On the other hand, little um, rainers have these remarkable prongs for teeth and each prong has a couple of tiny, tiny thorns at the base. So if you ever see teeth of that nature, you know you're looking at a rainers. On the other hand, white sharks have these wonderful, wonderful, great upright triangles. But then, of course, if you get close enough to a white shark to see those triangles, you've probably become a very temporary Australian. 
Having obtained the numbers, now I'm ready to go to the big library here behind me and start the detective work of tracking it down. Clearly, if you're a uh, weekend angler and um, you've got a strange fish, then um, you have a prayer of carrying around with you this great technical library that I use. It's far too heavy, far too voluminous. And therefore, what you need is some kind of a book that deals with the fish in the area where you fish. And that's how Guide the Fishers had its origin. Taking the time to learn a little more about the fish you encounter can provide a fascinating insight into these remarkable animals. The seventh edition of Grant's Guide to Fishers is available now. The quality of this book, which was produced and printed entirely in Brisbane, is exceptional. Its 880 pages cover the fish most commonly seen and caught throughout Australia. Many of its 697 colour plates are from photographs taken by Ern. These help ensure easy identification. Ern's 60 years in the field, combined with his marine science background, gives readers the best possible information. His motivation is simple. The fact is that I have a, a strong feeling towards my fish. And the second thing is that I love my fishing. So the books write themselves automatically. And um, in writing them, I get an awful amount of enjoyment. And if there's a handful of people out there that read them and get even part of the enjoyment out of reading them, if I do out of writing them, I'm well repaid.